welcome back to my channel and me trying to film a video around this noise i'm like i'm not gonna stop my lover he he's really into woodworking at the moment which is great because he's doing the drawers for our kitchen but um yeah it's making it difficult to find a moment to record so hopefully you can't really hear this i'll have to listen back to this part of the video before i record the main part but basically what i want to show you guys today are my go-to working spreads so these are the spreads that i use when i'm doing professional tarot readings when i'm reading for other people but you could still apply this to your own readings and i still do use these spreads often or more often than not for my own readings as well as friends and stuff but I find for client based readings this is my system you know I've really found my system here and it's because now I am doing a lot more readings on my working days and I've been able to play around with a few different styles and to be honest one of the spreads I'm going to show you is one of it was always my favorite spread for a while before i started doing it more often and regularly for work this is really tried and tested and it works for me and i think everyone has their own system that works for them so don't take this video as this is the only way to do client readings not at all this is what works for me i have a friend who i was speaking to recently mike who he was saying that he always uses the celtic cross and i was thinking you know like i hardly ever use the celtic cross but whenever i've had a reading from him it's been amazing and he's using this classic celtic cross system so you can find any spread any system any way of reading that works for you and works for your clients um, but this might be some inspiration for you. That's all this is meant to be. And maybe you will find some of my tips of how I use these spreads and systems helpful. I'm going to turn the camera around and we're basically going to do a reading together, like a phantom reading, not for anyone. Um, and I would just show you sort of my process. So I'll start with a spread and then maybe I'll pull some clarifiers. But yeah, we'll get into it. And I hope you enjoy this. And I hope the noise isn't too much of a disturbance. We are at my desk at the moment. I move around a lot. I don't have my witchy tarot room major or i just don't have one at the moment i was using our old bedroom but it's freezing in there so at the moment i'm at a desk by the window in my bedroom um just because we have a fire in here and it's warmer but i will bring this a little closer and i did just want to point out that i have a working deck so i with all the decks i have i really do want to get out of this habit of only using this deck pretty much 99 percent of the time for client readings it is my old ruggedy rough the first right away i ever got and actually no my second ever tarot deck it's that horrible yellow toned one that everyone hates and I just don't know what it is. I think it's just the way it shuffles. Oh, work for one moment. Sorry about that. Where was I? I was talking about the fact that I always use this as a working deck, but I really do want to get out of that habit. It's just that my readings are really clear from this deck. I just have a really strong connection with it. And yeah, I really want to gain more of a connection with my other decks, but this seems to be my main client deck. Sometimes I'll use the Crystal Visions because I'm also really connected with that deck. Um, but really, it's just this deck, but 
I'm feeling for this video, I'm going to use a different deck because then I can switch it up a bit. But what I will say is when I'm reading for clients, you do get a lot of the same kind of questions, 99% about love. With my job on the hotlines, I'm being paid by the minute, right? So people don't always want to be on the phone that long. Um, and they just want a really quick answer and I find the pendulum is better for quick yes and no's than the tarot deck um, and also because I'm working with so much energy I'm not a big crystal witchy but I always keep this blue tourbaline I think um, but this is a really good energy clearing stone and I don't know why I like that it is triangle but that doesn't really matter I don't know what it is but I when I have a working deck even if I'm like at my mum's house and I've only got my mum's or sister's crystals I'll find the blue tourbaline I always rest it between readings on my working deck so you might want to have something that you just feel like is clearing the energy. I also knock on the deck when I finish the reading and sometimes when I start a reading. I knock on the deck, just it, you can feel the energy waking up and shifting. Um, so just having those sort of things so you, you know, if you are reading for other people, you're doing a lot of readings, you don't wanna be picking up on energies and they're like storing in your energy field or in your deck or your your area and you can find so many ways of clearing and i've never been like a deck cleansing kind of person i'm not like if someone touches my deck i'm not going to cleanse it um but one thing i noticed is sometimes i'll still be the deck will still be in the energy of the last person i read if i forgot to knock it or something like that you know so do whatever works for you sage can work okay so for the other reason i like this deck is this is how i shuffle so how i shuffle for clients is very quick okay because like i said i mean paid by the minute so they're even paying for you to shuffle the cards you don't have time to be all like nice shuffles slowly placing out your cards no there's just no time for that um and to make sure i'm definitely getting the right cards for the clients and i'm not just stopping there and pulling from there because there's i feel rushed like i could do that but i found to get the most accurate readings for me i wait for jumpers like that And I am going through every card because I'm mostly doing one card at a time, okay? With this, thumb, my thumb is gripping one card at a time. So every card is getting a chance to jump out, you know? And that is another reason why I shuffle like this. We have another jumper. There's another one that flipped. So I will keep these in the position I would. This is my main client reading. So I'm just going to go with this deck, okay? And if it lands and I turn it and it's reversed, I keep it reversed. So if it flips itself back down, I won't often pick that one. It has to really like, flip itself over or flip itself out. And sometimes um, I still don't get all, I don't, it doesn't come out quick enough. So maybe I could think of a quicker way to do it. And I know there is a pickle. See that one, I turn it over, it's reversed. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so that's not the most efficient way but what the reason i do jumpers is that it just gives me more accurate readings and when you're being judged and you're having your readings reviewed and your reviews mean more clients like it's it's important for me to try and have high accurate accuracy um 
and this is what I feel like gives me the most accurate reading. So everyone's different. So this is my number one spread. The spread that I use more than any other spread. It's a four card spread. And it gives me all the information I need most of the time. So this is for the most asked question you're, you're ever going to get when doing tarot readings for people. How does he or she or them think of me? What do they think of me? How do they feel about me? Um, what are their intentions with me? Yeah, it's... It's just literally the most often asked question and it's a smart question to ask because it's important to try and understand, especially if you're not in communication, how someone is thinking or feeling about you and what are they planning on doing, you know, what are their intentions um, and, you know, how are they going to be acting and this covers it all. So this is asking about a particular person and what we have here is, and we're asking, what does this person feel about my client? So we're saying, this is what they think. Incoming call. Okay. Okay, so I do keep getting interrupted by work calls, but I'm really hoping now that I can just finish this video because I keep forgetting where I'm at. But basically, the idea of this spread is it's the element spread the four elements rather than the five um you can add the fifth card but i, I just never do oh funny how that's the devil the spirit <laughs> okay so we have air fire water and earth swords wands cups and pentacles okay so it's pretty easy to remember because it's the four suits and we know air represents our mind and our thoughts and communication. We And that's that one. And um, this is what they think about them and how they want to communicate with them, right? Here we have their actions because wands are our passion, our actions that we take, our plans that we make, okay? Um, so this is how this person plans or on acting and what action they're planning on taking um, towards my client, right? And then here we have the cups, which is emotions. This is how this person is feeling in their heart, right? Their real true feelings about everything. This is their feelings towards my client, right? And then here we have... This is the pentacles, the earth element, which for me, it can sometimes mean money, but this, we don't want to, how does that have to do with how does this person feel about me? So for me, I use this earth placement more as like, earth to me and pentacles to me is about everyday life as well. So it's the everydayness of life. So this is how they're showing up every day. You know, this is how things are right now for them and how they're showing up right now they might be planning on make taking this action but this is how they actually t are today right the the client is how's this person feeling about me and then you can just go you can go well it seems like they're thinking a lot about making a decision about the connection with you but they're not taking any action on it they're just thinking about how to go about it and they're definitely taking their time sevens for me are decisions okay um but this is in the pentacle suit it's sort of like they're thinking also how is this going to affect me every day like how, if I make the decision to go into the relationship with my client, then how is this going to affect my everyday life I need to really decide how that's gonna look then we have here the knight of pentacles showing up in the actions and the plans well they're planning on moving towards you yeah <laughs> but the pentacles moves very slowly 
Um, the Knight of Pentacles, all knights to me are moving towards, okay, unless it's reversed and it's moving away. So they're moving towards you, but they they plan on approaching you and making you a part of their everyday life, right? So they're approaching you physically every day, like not every day, but they're approaching you physically would be pentacles it's physical so ones is physical for me too like but ones is more like intimacy and sexual um and then swords is like if the night if this was a night of swords i'd be like they're wanting to communicate they're planning on communicating with you quickly and soon because the knight of swords moves fast right so but this person is moving towards you slowly by slowly being more a part of your life if you get what i'm saying here so so far it's a bit like hmm they're taking their time with the decision even though they're doing that they're still planning on i'm sorry about that my partner talking to my dad really loudly um anyway so it's kind of looking good from here when it comes to their actions so it's like even though they're overthinking it and they haven't made a decision yet they're still planning on getting to know you more all right so then here it's interesting we have another mat knight on a horse but it's the the death on the horse and then moving in that same direction so for me i would pick up on that like they're both moving towards the client so in this person's heart so how they feel is this connection feels transformative for them like this feels like this is a turning point for them where if they go for this their life's if they don't do or don't do this, either way is going to look very different. They're seen as having you in their life as making their life completely different and looking really different. But deaf upright is wanted transformation, needed transformation. So in their heart, they feel like it's a bit scary because they're going to have to bring like have a whole new life. But in their heart, they know this is their path. This is their destiny, right? And then we have the Wheel of Fortune reversed. This is in showing up every day. So this person just doesn't feel like in life, they don't feel like they're a very lucky person. It just seems to be that things don't go their way in life. And this could be why they're holding back a lot because they just don't feel like they get what they want in life. They don't feel like, you know, things work out for them. And that makes total sense, right? because we have the wheel of fortune reverse they just they're holding back because they're very cautious because they feel like this they feel like things don't always work out for them things don't go right for them so they're very protective of themselves and very cautious and that's in turn why they're very slow so we have a very clear reading here and i've been able to get so much information from my client if they want to dive in a bit deeper which they often do like, so what is it they like about me? They might ask, what is it that they like about me? So then I would expand on feelings here. But I could even just say, what is it that they like about me in general? That's it, you know? Um, what is it that they like about me? And just pull a card or two for that i would probably pull two cards for that unless i got a really clear answer from one so straight away i could start talking to the client from that well they really seem to like um the idea of the life that they could have with you they feel like also pentacles they they feel like you would be such a good fit for them and them a good fit for you they want what they do is they like doing the everyday things with you they want to do those mundane things with you like that they want to enjoy the small things in life together you see i'm getting a lot just from like oh we have another a so they really enjoy communicating with you and working together with you not just physically but mentally like they're really excited 
um, and stimulated by conversation with you. And then at the bottom of the deck, I might look and they they really want like the the pages for me are messengers all pages are messengers yeah but this is a messenger of cups a messenger of emotions and feelings and love all right they really love to um sorry about the background noise guys so they really love to communicate their love to you they really love to express their feelings to you um, they feel like they can be emotionally vulnerable with you. See, we're getting a lot from that. But also, if you're pulling this spread and you feel like, oh, that's just not enough. Oh, I just can't get enough information for what they're thinking with this Seven of Pentacles. And, you know, sometimes that happens to me. So I will say, give me a clarifier for that Seven of Pentacles. What are they thinking about you? What are they thinking about you we're getting all the bloody court cards um so they're thinking the knight of swords so in a way this knight of swords is kind of running away so but it's not in a way because it's upright see that would be maybe overthinking it like if i pulled this and i'm thinking quick like how does that work what are they thinking it's like they're overthinking things and it's and they're they're, they're overthinking a decision of even entering the relationship because they're scared of moving too fast. They like to take things slow. Um, I feel like I didn't give that much more information. And you could keep going. Um, we have the four emperor here. So they really want to make a good decision. They they don't want to mess up, right? They want to do it right. So that's why they're overthinking it because it's important for them, the outcome, you know? So there you go. You have a lot from that spread. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, I wasn't recording then. And then what I'll do is show you, I'll use a different deck for the fun of it. I will use this Everyday Witch deck. And we'll ask, um, this is for the questions like, what, what is going to happen in my relationship? So what is going to happen with me and this person within my relationship so they ask you that so that four card thing is they don't really want to know how the other person feels they want to know the future of the relationship um and so when people ask this they won't often give you um much if sometimes they do and i really appreciate people who give you a lot of information but often, and or sometimes say they got the Seven of Pentacles again. So we'll switch that up just so we're getting a good mix. Replace that Seven of Pentacles as a challenge. Okay. Okay. We'll do, I just want to do different cards to the last spread because we had Ace of Swords and Seven of Pentacles last time. So, this is interesting. This is for my, you know, for those sort of questions. What is the future? Where is this going? So here I have the situation as it is right now. Then I have the challenge and then I have the outcome. And the outcome has the actual answer they want, right? So I'll often expand on this, but here we have the situation. The reason I have situation is 
in, if they're not telling me everything that I need to know about the situation, then I need to have a bit of an idea of what the current situation is. And we have the star here. So straight away, that tells me something's happened in this relationship that now is over with and they're still healing from. Okay, so things feel better, but there has been a lot of damage and trauma have been done so i'll say i sense that you guys have been through a bit of a tough time recently and you're over the worst of it and i definitely want to assure you that you're definitely over the worst of it and things are looking up and getting a lot better from here and then they'll likely say yes we broke up recently we just got back together or we're kind of talking about getting back together and you've basically understood the the main energy of the current situation rather than going like oh my god you're gonna get married and blah 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 straight away not knowing any context of everything that's been going on so then I have this seven of wands in the challenge place, situation, challenge, outcome. Um, and we have the seven of wands. So I often will move straight to the outcome and come back to the challenge. Um, so we'll do that as that's what I would normally do. So here we have the chariot number seven as the outcome. This makes me think, so what is the future of this relationship? I'm seeing that things are going to be moving very quickly within the relationship. So if you're on a break, I'm seeing you coming together quickly. This healing is going to be complete quickly. Or I see you guys moving in the relationship quickly. And then I definitely would pull a clarifier on this card as um, as it's an outcome and what I would also like something I always know to be true is when I pull a major arcana cards are soul path cards right the fool's journey it's the soul's path right so these are very strong soul cards messages from your soul from your blueprint right we have three major arcana cards. I know that this is either, this is a type of soulmate relationship. And so soulmate or a karmic relationship, they were destined to meet. They were always meant to have met and they're meant to have helped each other through certain lessons. Okay. Um, so I'm seeing there's that connection there, and I'd always bring it up and people can often sense when they have that really strong energetic connection um so added on to this we have the hangman so that is completely contradicting what i just said right of uh, things are moving really quickly um and then the hangman where it's like there's no movement at all so i would definitely ask for one more clarifier for this and then i would sum the situation up the best that i could for the client okay so here we have the Ten of Swords reversed coming in. So what I'm seeing here is the outcome is that things are going to move quickly, but it's important that you're both moving together because what I've noticed in here is we have one way this way, this way and this way. So if they're moving in the opposite directions, um, they're going to run in to this. So... It's like I can see things moving quickly, but I do see you guys coming into another stalling point um, where the past trauma is going to come up that isn't fully healed. And this is why it's so important that you're communicating and that you're on board um, together and you're going in the same direction towards the same things that you want the same thing so it's really important to have that conversation because this is swords around what happened the pain right so that you can actually end this cycle because it can't end it's in reverse this this 10 is the end of a cycle but it, it's not fully finished and that's going to come up it's going to come back together it's going to feel really good and then you're going to hit a road bump um, and the challenge is going to be here 
the fear of what other people think okay so it's really important to not like take on other people's arguments or what other people think that you guys stand strong in going in for moving forward in the relationship and don't let that bring you down because i can see it will end up catching up with you so all i'm saying here is i feel like you guys are in a good place right now you're moving past what happened it's important that you don't let other people's judgments get in the way. I can see you guys getting back in the future, in the near future. I see in that energy is coming in quick with that chariot. Um, but it is important that you don't rush things too quickly and that you make sure you have the conversations that are needed around what happened in the past um, so that that doesn't catch up with you. Because I am seeing that. Um, initially being ignored um, and then coming up to be acknowledged so just be aware of that but trust in if you want to be back together that you will be and this is how it's sort of the energy for that is looking right now everybody always has and I always let most of my clients know like you know you have your free will and you know predictions can always change because of that and when these energies are very likely, it's good to like warn people because that will make what might have seemed like a big drama happening. You know, they're moving along with that chariot card and then you hit that hangman and then that reverse ten of swords and it's just like, oh, slice in the gut. It's this again. Having had this reading, you're more prepared for that and you can just approach it way more gently, right? Instead of making it like end of the world kind of stuff. And that's how these sort of readings can really help people. But that is um, the, my main go-to spreads. And as you saw, I did pull a lot of clarifiers along my way. Always feel free um, to pull more clarifiers. And I also do um, just free pull. And sometimes someone's asked so many questions that I'll just be like, okay, answer to that question, you know? Answer to that question. Um, but like I said, the way I showed you is my main way of working. So I hope you enjoyed that guys. And I hope you gained a lot from this. Um, if not, just had some fun looking at pretty cards with me and make sure to subscribe, like, and comment. That helps me out a lot. And I will see you next time. Bye.